To be fair, you actually give a really good presentation. Did pretty well. That's something yeah. I learned. Now so, I yeah. still that little ten thing. <laughs> but it's, it's worth a good. I'll see how that works with the objections, cause. So that was the first close that I ever got. At this point, I was about one week into my SMA journey and I had already bombed my first five sales calls that I jumped on. I was nervous, I was losing sleep over this, and for some reason, I didn't have any hair. Lucky that's gone. But more importantly, how did I even end up on this call in the first place? So I messaged this guy on Instagram using quite possibly the worst DM script ever but for some reason he gave me a chance. And I jumped on this call with the guy using a Calendly link that I couldn't even afford the pro version for at the time. Going into the call, I had everything prepared. I had my demo deck, I had my fake green screen and almost everything you need not to see success on a sales call. Right there is the lesson because I'm gonna break down and hopefully relate to a lot of the sales experience that maybe somebody watching this has had so far and hopefully give some pointers that I wish I knew when I first started. Last thing before we get into the information. No, I'm not still trying to get my first few clients. This is when I first started my appointment setting agency and now I've helped generate over 100 clients for myself and the people I worked with and now I partner with six figure agencies in the Relentless Success Club. Welcome to the sales call review. I hope my voice alone is enough to retain you even though I looped you in a little bit of a cinematic intro, but I guarantee if you can watch through this entire thing, you will close your first free trial client because you'll know exactly how to sell them in a way that is honest and a way that will retain them so you can work with them and actually make progress with your social media marketing agency. So let's get started with the call. Yeah. All right, I'll get into the presentation. So this is the appointments a la carte system. First thing I'll say, this is the immediate start of the call. There was no rapport built ahead of the call. No questions about who he is, what he's doing, what his current situation is. Just got on the call, popped up a screen share and immediately went into all the juice, all the pitches of what I'm doing, which is an immediate no-no. I completely disagree with using a demo deck now that I have more experience. And if you are not in the rapport phase where you build up with your prospect and show them who you are, tell your own story and learn about theirs, you're not going to actually get any trust, which means you're not going to get the close as well. So before we begin, here's the framework that we'd be operating on moving forward. We've done our intro. We're on the demo call right now. And then we'd have to go through a kickoff, building out systems, creating teams, and then we finally go live and begin. This could all take place anywhere from five days to a week's time. Next, we have okay. the typical agency owner. So this is just going to be. So look at this. I have set the hierarchy with an agency owner. That's a lot further on than I am or a business owner. That's a lot further on than I am. So you take a look at me down in the bottom left of your screen. The prospect is going to be all the way up here in a hierarchy. And we're going to be down here and we're actually speaking with the person because they've been in the industry for years and years and have learned and have made money and are supplying their entire life with this business. And we're usually just a teenager or somebody trying to get started. So for us to try and say we're on equal footing or even higher than them like this and talk down on them saying, hey, this is how the call is going to go. It doesn't really create much trust or rapport with the person. We have to understand that going into this and understand that selling a free trial is highly, highly emotional. The more cheap something is, the more emotional, the more expensive, the more logical to sale. And because we're selling a free trial, it's going to be extremely cheap, which means that it's going to be extremely emotional to get the close. Well, best way to get the emotion is to build a story, which I have not done here by just immediately opening up a pitch and going into it. Be a quick rundown of some common issues agency owners face. So to begin, a lot of agency owners rarely book qualified meetings with prospects. When a lot of agency owners have a set stream of customers and they're in that mid revenue phase, a lot of them find it difficult to really maximize their outreach systems to scale to the next level and bring in that new influx of clients. So just a small thing, take a look at my prospect's face. He looks like he wants to get off this call immediately and it's UK time here. It's almost midnight for this guy at the time of this call and it looks like he's about to fall asleep. Next we have untrained staff giving minimum effort. A lot of the time this isn't the fault of the agency owner, but a lot of the time as well, VA owners and VAs will have minimal knowledge of their actual service. They'll just know what they have. So this could just be having a very strong built out CRM that's heavily automated with follow-ups and thank you for booking videos, or it could just be the systems are busy and it's really difficult. So especially. what I just did is I generalized all of what I thought agency owners problems was, right? If we see here, I go the day of life, typical agency owner, rarely booking qualified means with prospects, untrained staff, team minimum effort, no systems to streamline and optimize outreach. And I kind of just assumed everything that he's dealing with right now. And the issue is that when you assume somebody's problem, they aren't really going to 
actually think that you can solve their problem. And what I mean by that is this guy knows that if he gets more qualified appointments, he's going to make more money, right? He knows they doesn't need me to tell him that, but because I don't speak to his issues and because I generally, you know, just say, Hey, here's how you do it. Da, 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 he's not going to respect what I have to say because it's not specific to him. Right. The reason why people pay for one on one consulting is not because the information that the consultant will tell them is absolutely nowhere else in the world. It is because it's specific to the person and it's specific to the context of their situation. So you have to do the exact same thing when we're on a sales call and only really speak to the problems that they introduced to us, which would be presented in that rapport phase, which I entirely skipped on this call and got straight into the pitch. Built out CRM that's heavily automated with follow ups and thank you for booking videos. Or it could just be the systems and someone holding them accountable every day. And that not enough time of the day to fix these issues working with Alex and can you hear this so the next thing I go into is testimonials and these are testimonials from people I had helped out before on kind of like an appointment setting appointment setting for them so I have all these testimonials here but the underlying thing is that these testimonials aren't worth any value because there's no claim or desired result that I attained for them generated right this guy just says um, oh. Working with Alex. And can you hear this? Working with Alex has helped me da -da -da -da, with my appointment setting and now I'm booking appointments. Da -da -da. It's not a really desired result. It's not like, hey, I worked with Alex and I signed on four new clients and made $10,000, right? Because it's not that much of a desired result, the claim itself, whether it's from a real human being or not, isn't that important. And I go through and I do this for all these testimonials over here and they don't really hold any value at all. And then combine that with the fact that I haven't even made any claims, I haven't even introduced my service, what it does, what problem it can solve, the specific problem that it can solve to them, right? I've just whipped out testimonials for no reason, right? There's nothing to back up, there's no claim to back up. I'm showing social proof of no service at this point. You basically just talk about how I helped him with outreach. I'd worked as a growth. With that in mind, let me introduce the system that's helping agency owners. I wail on all these testimonials. Now it's time to hear the system. And this is, again, the appointments a la carte system. So what we do and what we provide first is expert team building. So it all begins with the formation of our team. Using our tested systems, we will find growth team members that are native English speaking, diligent, proactive, and on paper lead basis. So let me just take a quick step back and ask you a question about the teams here, because I know you have your two VAs set up. Okay. So what I've done now is go through the features of my offer after showing the social proof, which doesn't really attached to any desired results, right? I've shown this guy testimonials that I've worked with people before. Now I'm showing him the features of what I offer, but I haven't even told him what I can do for him yet. He has no clue what's going on. He's confused because there's no actual direction as to what I'm trying to help him do, which I would have found out if I did that rapport phase at the start of the call to find out, you know, what is your actual problem that I can help you solve? How many appointments do you need? What are you trying to figure out? What is that one thing that is stopping you from getting where you want to be? So we we'll go on this and I talk about the features of my service. And I'd like to give a little analogy about the features of your service. So let's say there are two islands across from each other, just like my hands over here. These are the two islands. On one island, there is our man. And on the other island, the man, just the island, just the man and the island. So it's a man and an island. That's it. Second island over here, we have that man's family, a house, shelter, everything he needs to survive, everything he wants in life. And he cannot get from island one where he's at right now to island two where he wants to be. So imagine you had to sell man on island one on how to get to island two. He does not care if it is a plane that goes over. He does not care if it's a boat that goes across. He does not care if it's a teleportation portal that brings him to island two. He cares about getting to island two. And it's the exact same thing when we're speaking to our prospects problems. This guy does not care whether I go and stand on a street with a hot dog costume and point people to work with him or if I have the most advanced cold email appointment setter VA set up in the world, all he wants is an answer to his actual problem, which I don't even know at this point because I didn't go through that rapport phase again. So we offer again the built-out CRM system. The next week, next thing we offer is in-depth training. So and scripts. Click um, through, click through. For that day. So daily coaching and accountability. Again, that goes back to the hierarchy thing. I'm down here. He's up here in this conversation. He's a lot more mature than me. He's a lot more experienced than me. He's a lot more progress than me. So me providing daily coaching doesn't correlate as any value to him because I'm just a kid, right? Get better over time and book more meetings. Mm -hmm. And then, and then we go over of everything. So we have the value stack. And tell you right now, it's not worth this much. At this point, it is not worth this much because I 
have nothing to back up who I am. I have no actual backup, no evidence of what I can do. And I'll give you an analogy to prove this. Let's say you live beside a homeless shelter. On the homeless shelter, you're walking to the gym. You're walking to the gym and on the way you cross by the homeless shelter and a guy named Bill who's sitting on the floor says, hey, I'll give you or you give me $1,000 and I'll come back with $10,000 tomorrow. You're going to look at Bill and you're going to look down at him because he's sitting on the floor and you're going to say no. No, I'm not, Bill. Or you're going to ignore him because you don't believe him. You don't believe what he has to say. Now imagine you go by the next day and that same guy is not there and instead it's Bill Gates. Exact same position, exact same place, but it's Bill Gates now and not the homeless guy named Bill. And he said, hey, Alex, da 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 Give me $1,000 and, you know, I'll come back with $10,000. I would trust Bill Gates with $1,000, right? Maybe it is a little bit weird that he's there. But the point is, is that because Bill Gates has a history of multiplying money over and over and over again, he can be trusted to actually go ahead and move forward with projects, whereas our homeless Bill cannot, right? And it's the exact same thing with here in my offer, right? So I'm making all these claims and I'm making all these value stacks, but this doesn't have any proof to back it up. And you can say words, I'm saying words to you right now, but words don't mean anything unless you actually put the actions behind them that are worth value and make it valuable in and of itself. So we have our expert team building, a built out CRM, in-depth training and accountability. And then this is strategy. just the so bonus that is going on, on this call. Even if we're not built out, just adding so more stuff that doesn't really have any backup to it at all, which you can see he still does not care about. Right, you'll see at the end of this call, he's not too, too interested. They should be doing better and but slowly correct their mistakes. So that one thing on the call that I do well, and this is called the litmus test. Get better over time and book more meetings. Bonus forward. Mm. So reads, money aside, where are you on the scale? One being get me off this call and 10 being everything makes sense. I want to move forward. I'd say like a six. A six? So what are your yeah. concerns? Well, first, um, what are like the costs of everything? So like what so are your prices? I'll go in. Okay, so the reason why I did this is in order to objection handle, right? The whole strategy behind this one to 10 thing is they give you a number between one to 10 and you objection handle until they say 10, I want to move forward. And while this style of selling might worked well, you know, 50 years ago, with the new age of selling where so many people are offering everything and these guys are getting spammed every single day with offers of people trying to provide them services this isn't going to work so well because i'm not their only source of information i'm not the only person that can help them so there is no reason for them to be a 10 unless i've shown absolutely every single case study in the world that you can imagine and i was the actual best in my industry which as you can see by the demo deck and the overall carrying out of this call the testimonials that i'm not the best in my industry at all into that that's that's the next. So price aside, where do you think you are? So if the service was completely free, free of charge, would you take it? And then we're on the scale. We go on. Obviously, I go through what makes people sell. And I objection handle at the nine minute phase into the call, which is done incorrectly, right? While the objection handling is good and he goes like, yeah, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I want to move forward with that. Let me get rid of this. Apologies. The actual objection handling factor isn't that important at all. Right, because why are there any objections to handle? You should have pre-handled those objections earlier in the sales call, and that is the underlying thing behind this. Objections should have been brought up and dealt with in the rapport phase and should have spoke to them as you were talking about who you are in your story. So what I mean by that is let's say this guy had the problem where he couldn't get any appointments on Instagram outreach. Right? That's his problem. He tells me that. So now when I tell my story, I go, hey. My name's Alex. I'm 15 because at the time of this call, I was 15 years old. And, you know, I'm just really trying to get started in the social media marketing agency world. Da -da -da, go on with my story. And then at some point, I answer to the fact that, hey, I helped this person with Instagram outreach because now I'm speaking to the actual problem that he has. And by doing that, this objection is pre handled. What I've I done here is I've pretty well just opened a book of every concern that he has. And I'm trying to go one by one, handling every single concern. Luckily, this guy was very patient with me, but if it was anyone but this guy, I can imagine at this point they would have given me smokescreen objections, which is really not what they're dealing with. And because of that, I don't never got to the actual root of why they didn't want to move forward. And because of that, not get the close at all. Um, the core principles of how you're going to be working your DMs, and I'll actually do that quickly here. The In its most basic framework is to find their desired state, find what's stopping them from getting there, and then provide a solution. 
and that's mm-hmm. in its most basic state. And I go through and I reference loads of books. Sometimes I'll even have them watch an audiobook summary. Yeah, this is just the objection handling phase. Go on here, handling every single objection, and then I value stack the entire thing again, getting it to sixteen thousand dollars, which, as we know, is just not true Once at again, all. A lot more. Mm-hmm. Then I'm I good. go ahead and pitch the price, and I'll tell you one thing. Right now, you really shouldn't be pitching the price in a sense of, hey, it's a demo deck, right? You don't put the price on the demo deck because the thing is, is that you don't know if you can help them, right? If you go into the call at the frame of, hey, I don't know if I can help you. I'm going to do what sounds best and I'm going to do what I think is best based on the information you give me, based on the problems I find out about your business and actually decide if I can help. Then that way you're going to have a lot more tailored of a pitch. So this very base pitch is not point point and then the buyer, you might have to think about it. And, and then I go on and I say, hey, you can reserve your spot. And then I continue on and I price anchor the guy, right? I price anchor him down to a lower price of a $250 setup, which I mean, as you can see, is not a lot to him. So he just decides to move forward. It's like, hey, he's a kid, da, 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 let me move forward. But overall, this sales call was not conducted properly. And I'm going to explain to you why in the overall perspective that you can use to not make the same mistake in the next phase. So this is where you are going to learn how to sell better than I did here. And it's going to go along the basis of selling a free trial or a commission trial. We're not asking for any money up front from the person. The first thing I'm going to establish is the hierarchy. Right? When we're selling, this is what it's going to look like. The prospect is up here because they have lots of business experience and we are down here. So we're going to say us. This is where we are. And when we're speaking to the prospect and we're so much lower than them, we have to learn to speak up. Right. If we try and speak across, it's not going to hit them. If we try and speak down, it's also not going to hit them. We have to learn how to speak up. And the best way to speak up is through doing stories because stories are going to allow us to convey emotion. And when we convey our emotion, let's say this little red gush is our emotion over here. We convey our emotion. We let people into the experiences of our life. And because the offer is full commission and it's fully cheap, we show the emotions that we're hardworking, that we're dedicated. And they go like, yeah, why don't we try moving forward with this guy? And that is the basis on how you can get close. It's the same framework that over 200 people have used to get their first free trial client in the FCC, which is linked below if you're interested in it. What is really the basis behind that is just being able to convey it, right? It's not about whether you have the coldest story where, you know, every life event was stacked up against you, or if you had the prettiest life in the world and you've never faced a challenge or any hardship ever. It doesn't matter because it's about the delivery of it right? The emotions you felt in your life are real. And the reason you've watched this far in this video is because you actually have a desire to start your business and make progress, right? So given that there are real emotions behind and driving you on why you're doing this and what you need to learn how to do is convey that to the person. Be honest with them. You don't need to logically sell them and value stack as to why you're the best option. You need to show them who you are. And by showing them who you are, they're going to build trust in you, enough trust in you to actually go ahead and work with you. The way of doing that is to take your story. So let's say we have our story here. My base story is that I was a 15 year old kid who was playing video games too much and had a rude awakening, had his parents get mad at him and decided that I needed to change my life. It's a pretty boring story with not a lot of hardship in it. What I was allowed to do is transition it into a phase of being lost in my life. I had no clue what I wanted to do. And because of that, I started trying to improve myself. I went to the gym, I meditated, I tried to improve who I was so that eventually I could work a corporate job, da, 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 da. But then I actually stumbled upon a way to actually help business owners. I spent all my time researching into people on how I can help you as a business owner. And the reason I've reached out today is to show you that strategy and see maybe if you'd be interested in moving forward. And taking that very bland story, very bland actual event that happened and turning it into a compelling story is what's going to allow me to convey this emotion that's later on going to get the close. And that is how you should be selling. You do not need the demo deck You do not need to do what I've done and learn from my mistakes and properly sell. And I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope the time that I stole from you, because if you watch this far, I guarantee you will see success in your sales has been worth the value I provided.